the good news is, is it was only about double what the normal background radiation is, and that can happen on a sunny day with the Geiger counters. Jakari found fish that had 10 times the normal, 14 times the normal in San Francisco. The media didn't believe it, sent reporters out there, this is two years ago, and they said, yeah, we found that. The Army went and confirmed Jakari's readings. We never claimed to be professional you know, radiologists. We had professional Geiger counters and a field meter, and we just, you know, that were calibrated, and we showed the numbers. And then the Army went out and confirmed it, and it caused a debate. So here's a clip of one of her reports when she was right outside the fire zone within 100 yards yesterday. Here it is. I just got a phone call from Don Chapman. She's the founder of Just Moms STL as well as St. Louis Radwaste Legacy.com. She called to let us know that right now the landfill is experiencing a leachate leak. It's huge. Don, what's going on? There's 10 to 11,000 gallons of leachate leaking right now back in the field down there. Leachate is very toxic. It's from the landfill. It's created from the burning Superfund materials and garbage that are occurring right next to you. It's, it, we understand that a force main broke and the leachate 10, again, 10 to 11,000 gallons of it leaked. That's what you're smelling right now. You're smelling the actual uh, right. odors and emissions from that leachate. Right, and we're not going to be able to stay here too long because I'm literally feeling burning sensation in my chest. So this leachate, uh, you call it, d uh, d what it like dump juice, basically. Uh, but this is the radioactive material that's here in this landfill now leaked 10,000 gallons. Leaked and by the way, I mean, the crew, you know, went out there. I think they need respirators, not just masks. See the locals on with paper masks. I guess that might help a little bit. But the issue here is these things are all over the country. We spent a few minutes with Leanne. She's followed a bunch of reports, and we're going back to Max Kaiser of MaxKaiser.com. But this, for me, is indicative of the establishment not caring. Look at Fukushima. Look at all these other examples. Leanne, your Skype was breaking up too bad earlier. Thank you for spending so much time out there. I've kind of told you I want you to get out of the area, but you're still back there on top of the radioactive hill of waste that's starting to leak. Leanne McAdoo. Well, we actually, uh, Alex, that's right. We are back here at the West Lake landfill. I know, I know you told us to fall back, but we, we wanted to come get some Geiger counter readings of our own, just for our own personal peace of mind. Uh, happy to report that on this side of the perimeter, everything is fine. We're getting them in the high 40s. Um, of course, we'll probably be fine. The issue is for the families that have to be here every single day encountering that toxic material. Uh, now, as you can see behind me, uh, this is the leachate. This is where the leachate is uh, stored, and it's leaked more than 10,000 gallons yesterday. Uh, what what happens with leachate? It's kind of a water that's pumped through the landfill, um, and it's it absorbs some of the undesirable particulates in the landfill, which Ugh. a lot of people complain about it because of you know it'll cause pollution, things like that. The issue here is that this particular landfill there is radioactive material. So this is what the families are concerned about: is how are you allowing this? to, you know, leak into the air and things like that if if we know that there is now a radioactive material here on this site. Well, and, Leanne, also, and I talked to you privately earlier. You were pretty emotional after talking to people with their very. deformed children. Uh, the, the, there's neighborhoods around this. Uh, to, to report that to folks. You know, it has been a very emotional here. We've got some reports that are going to be coming up later uh, where we actually got to sit down with some of these families. And there is a huge cancer cluster in the area. It's not from this particular landfill uh, but it's from the same manhattan project waste that has been dumped all around this city in many different areas and so uh, we're sp we've spoken with people who were actually involved there at mallinckrodt chemical works uh, their parents died their um their children have died and then also we are speaking uh, spe speaking with people who uh, were playing around in the creek in the 80s when a lot of the material in the soil, the sediment was being moved and shuffled around when they were trying to create new subdivisions. Little did they know that there was 240,000 industrial waste barrels buried underneath that ground where the waste was from the Manhattan Project. And so they were just putting, pushing the sediment around. These families, they're planting gardens in their yard, thinking they're doing good, feeding their children fresh fruit and vegetables. And now there is a huge cancer cluster in the area uh, this area alone has 300,000 people and 45 cases of appendix cancer, which, just to put that in perspective, you should see maybe one in 100,000. Here, it's just, it's outrageous. All sorts of cancers, like I said, 
birth defects, um, autoimmune disease. Sure. And so we need to take this seriously because these Manhattan Project sites are all over the nation. Well, exactly. And again, you've got 90 plus percent of the 440 something reactors worldwide leaking. I'm going to ask Max Kaiser about this in a moment. I know he's been passionate on it. We've got all these other uh, research reactors at universities that are leaking. And now they just cover it up when it leaks. The EPA, as you know, you reported yesterday, is just saying, oh, we're not worried about it. It's no big deal. And uh, just what is the attitude of the establishment to dump this type of garbage? You filed five reports. I know you've got some other interviews you're going to do, and then you're going to come on back, Leanne, because we don't want you to, uh, you and Josh, to suffer the same fate as those locals. I think the bottom line is people should research where they live. Right. And try to not live close to these toxic landfills, even if the government says it's nutritious. Absolutely. And that's what the families are fighting for is just to keep better track of this so people can know if they're moving into these communities. They didn't even know that there was um, the Manhattan Project was being worked on in St. Louis until a few years ago. These families, they wouldn't have bought their homes here if they knew that they were building uh, going to build right next to radiological waste. No, they, the community was not told. If they had lead paint in their homes, they would have to be told, but they weren't even, they had no idea. And so it's just very frightening. And like I said, you know, this is all across the country. And a lot of people don't understand why they're coming up with these rare cancers, why they're 30 years old, 35 years old, dying from cancer. It's or why their children are born with brain tumors, you know, that you see in 70-year-old men. So it's, it's a pretty big deal. And they're just trying to get the government and the state government to do something about it because this is going to happen to this next generation of people with this waste right now. That's right, Leanne. And be sure, I know you already set, have this set up. Uh, don't let us bug you with these live broadcasts because we can air all this later in the week and next week. Get those interviews with those parents. I mean, Fukushima happened four plus years ago. They said we were conspiracy theorists to say that it would hurt children. Now they admit the rates of cancer, thyroid cancer in children are some of the highest in the world within 100 miles of Fukushima. Uh, so this attitude of just calling people conspiracy theorists uh, is such a serious crime by these elites. And it really frightens me to think who's running things. Leanne McAdoo and Josh Owens, great job. When are you planning to come back to Austin? We'll be flying back Thursday night, so we'll we'll see you there Friday. I'll be doing the InfoWars Nightly News. All right, well, let's have you and Josh in studio on Friday, Leanne. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, there goes Leanne McAdoo. I appreciate Max Kaiser uh, giving up part of his interview for that because her Skype wasn't working or our Skype wasn't working earlier. It was working now. Important info. Max, I think this ties in to the derivatives and to everything else that the establishment has never been perfect. But they're more reckless than ever with derivatives and toxic waste and hadron colliders and wars with China and Russia and the Middle East. I mean, what do you think is going on with the establishment? And then I want you to get in more into where you think the economy is going. Well, I talked to you about my, my theory, what I call interest rate apartheid. And we all know what apartheid is when you have a portion of the population put into a ghetto, essentially, and they are deprived basic services. And we've seen this famously in South Africa and in, in other places. But an interest rate apartheid is where you have uh, some of the population able to borrow money at 0% and make bets in the financial markets. And if those bets are pay off, they can keep the profits. But if the bets go bad, then they get bailed out by the state. That's what happens to the people living on the right side of the interest rate apartheid wall. If you're living on the wrong side of the interest rate apartheid wall, then you are borrowing money on your credit card at 16%. You're engaged with credit with the payday lenders who might charge you an annualized rate of 3,000 or 4,000 <laughs> percent. If you met, if you're exactly, it's 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 atrocious. Uh, if you miss a payment, you get charged. You get nickel and dime. You get harassed on the highway. It's you know seizures of wealth on the highway, etc. So this is the interest rate apartheid. So if you, unless you're able to borrow money at 0%, and I mean a million, 10 million, 5 million, 50 million, no questions asked, then you're living in a ghetto. You live in the wrong side of this whole economic fandango, and you are living like a second or third class citizen. So everyone listening to your show should ask yourself this question. Can I go out and borrow $10 million at 0% interest right now? And if the answer is no, then welcome to the ghetto. If I want to buy a house, I've got to pay 
that I've got good credit, 6% interest, 7% interest, and I've got to put 20, 30% down that I don't even have. I mean, it's crazy. And people would think I'm, quote, wealthy. Of course, I'm not. Uh, I mean, imagine getting $50 million loan at 0% interest. How do you enter that club, Max Kaiser? Well, I mean, okay, so you're buying a house. You'll pay 6% or what have you. Now, look at a firm like BlackRock on Wall Street. They're buying a, a whole um, development in Manhattan with thousands of units, and they'll get a total tax break. Their cost of funding will be under 0%. It'll be wow. less than 0%. They'll get a tax abatement, and they'll get all these properties essentially for uh, way below market value, uh, and that's because they live on the right side of the, of the interest rate apartheid wall. They know the right people. They go to the right meetings. They make the right bribes. I think that if you ask me how do you get on the right side of this, it, it comes down to bribery, just like any other tin pot dictatorship like America or any other dic you know, dictatorship. It's all about bribes. These guys know who to bribe. And when I was working on Wall Street, to get the good deals, you had to bribe the compliance officer. You had to bribe the national sales manager. You had to bribe the regional sales manager. This is the way business is done in America today. Unfortunately, it's no longer a meritocracy. It's, it's really de degraded into an economy based on bribes, kickbacks, insider trading, which is legal. If you're a, a Washington senator or a congressman, you don't, uh, you don't have to comply with insider trading laws. And you're just gifted money. As long as you rubber stamp military actions and as long as you rubber stamp every godforsaken policy and low interest rates and corruption, you get the big fat juicy reward. Look at Nancy Pelosi or any of these people in Washington. They when they they become multimillionaires simply because they're corrupt and they just Yeah, she showed up worth less than a million and last time I saw She's worth like 188 million, I think. But that's right, not that's, the real that's, scam. That's what I'm saying. Her Eric husband Eric made billions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Look at Eric Holder, former Attorney General of the United States. He's now back on Wall Street, working for a Wall Street firm, milking it for millions, tens of millions, probably a hundred million dollars. He's he's the guy who said, "I'm sorry, but these banks are too big to prosecute." Now there's a theory going around Wall Street. That if your crime is complicated enough, then no jury will be able to understand it, so therefore you're innocent. This has just been borne out by several cases where juries were told about bankers committing massive fraud. And when they got through explaining what the fraud was, using derivatives, etc., the jury couldn't make any sense of it because it's ultra complicated. So they said, well, then I guess they're innocent. This goes back to the dot-com bubble, the 2000 era. Frank Quattroni, he worked at a bank called Swiss uh, Credit Swiss. He was caught red-handed engaging in a scam called laddering IPOs. It's an old trick on Wall Street. He was caught red-handed. He went before the jury. They argued their case, and they concluded that, well, the jury's too stupid to understand this, so we're gonna, he's free. He's innocent by virtue of stupidity of the American people. And now it's just gone systemic. Almost every single banker in the world now can go to a court and say, well, what, how did you steal the money? Well, we used an out-of-the-money butterfly put spread and hedged it with a futures contract wrapped in a credit default swap, and that's how we did it. And the jury will say, what does that mean? And the judge will say, you're innocent because you're too stupid. This guy's innocent. Go, go to get an MBA. Go get a doctorate in finance and come back in 30 years. Well, I've always said corruption is able to hide in complexity, and that's exactly what's going on with these derivatives. I mean, you really look at them, they're just incredibly complex frauds, so they can sell them hundreds of times over. But at its basis, it's a fraud selling the same house more than once, selling the same mortgage to more than one person. Let's uh, dig into that. Let's dig into that a little bit, a, a little bit, because you, you're absolutely correct that selling the same thing more than once is fraud, and it's at the root of these problems. In on Wall Street, there's a term called hypothecation where you are using securities as collateral for loans. The reason why London is the center, the global center for all the major financial scandals, AIG, Madoff, the London Whale, Lehman Brothers, is because only in London do they provide for infinite rehypothecation. And when you define what that means, it means that you can sell the same security an infinite number of times to an infinite number of, of clients. You can, and so, therefore, 
you can imagine that there's quite a bit of room for fraud. Why did Lehman go under? Because if you looked at their books, you